Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. Coaches, the Jamoti Podcast is powered by Scoreboard Media. Scoreboard Media works with high schools across the country to run professional sponsorship programs on their LED scoreboards. Whether you already have LED and you just want to supercharge the revenue, or you want to use sponsorship revenue to buy new LED video scoreboards, Scoreboard Media can help. They work with sponsors and advertisers locally, regionally, and nationally who want to connect with your school's community. Email info at scoreboardmedia.com to start the conversation and see what's possible. Uh, one more question, and then we'll do a quick speed round, and I'll get I'll let you go. This this may be hard for you to answer, and if you can limit it to three, that'd be great. But what are three characteristics of a great coach? Number one, loyalty. Gotcha. I mean, that's the one thing. It's my dad. But, and, and it's not just you're loyal to your players, you're loyal to your program, your school. Um, and it happens, there, you know, goes into everything in life. You know, it's hard to find loyalty. Uh, you need loyal assistance, but that's what – Loyalty is number one. I think you have to have a personality. You have to have a personality. And now it, it can be like Scott's personality, which gets you energized. It can be like my dad's personality that gets you energized in a different way, but it's motivation. You know, you got to be able to motivate people. Mm. Um, and communication. You got to be able to talk to get your point across. You know, because, you know, everything you think about coaching has to do with communication uh, and motivation. Your players, your alumni, your recruiting, you know, your own assistants. Um, but the one I always took from my dad is loyalty. I mean, I've never seen a more loyal guy to his players. If they did something, I, you know, we all screw up. I mean, even I got kicked off the team. I mean, he actually told me, he's like, <laughs> you know, I love you. You're my son. But as a player, I hate you right now. You know, like, <laughs> I mean, he actually told me. He used to say I was the reason. Animals ate their young. Well, uh, I, had, I had a bad two years there, man. I, I was doing, I, I was buck wild, but I just, but he was still loyal. I was still one of his guys, but it, the loyalty, no one talks about, but just seeing him help. I mean, players would call. It didn't matter if it was money, a job, or just, it, like you said, just need a pat on the back. He's always there for his players, his friends. Uh, I mean, it's crazy to say, but even with his Alzheimer's, he probably – he didn't know who I was probably the last year and a half, two years. Had no, hmm. no idea. But he knew I played for him. Hmm. And I tell him, you know, Dad, I'm your son, I played for it. But the playing for him hit, and, I mean, it was wild. So I um, I kept an apartment. The, the pace was great. So I had an apartment for three years up in Indianapolis. I'd come every month uh, – to spend time with them. You know, they let me handle my schedule and everything. And every time I left the house, because he, he realized I played for him, he'd be like, hey, if you ever need anything, and you need me to make a phone call for you, just let me know. And, you know, the poor guy can't, you know. But yeah. that was still in his mindset to help one of his guys. And to me, that loyalty, I mean, and it's hard to find. I mean, how many, you know, you get fired in a situation. Like I always tell guys, I warn them when they get fired in coaching. I was like, all right, you're going to find out who your real friends are. And, you know, I count on my hand the guys, you know, I was out of it 10 years and guys that would call me all the time uh, when I was coaching, then you don't hear from them. But that was the one thing. And people are like, well, how's loyalty entering the coaching? It does, you know, because you want to be loyal to your, your school. You know, I mean, my God, my dad was like, uh, it's kind of neat going through the, uh, his memorabilia now and stuff. And I find letters from like, uh, oh, shoot. He ended up retiring as, um, I think, a general, but I think he was like a colonel or whatever. Uh, whoever hired, the first guy hired him at Westport. These letters, I mean, 20 years later, just a loyalty to my dad because this guy gave him a bone, hired him as a young guy at West Point. Then uh, I think it was uh, Bill Ulrich, first guy, uh, the first um, AD at Indiana that hired him. And I come across these letters, just cards and stuff um, in the last couple of months going through my dad's stuff. And 
I'm not, you know, 20, 30 years later, just the loyalty, just because that guy helped him and he just always would sometimes to a fault, but I'd rather have that than not be loyal. Right. Uh, that's, and that was going to be kind of my point to that is I, I agree. I think it's rare, but I don't think as a coach, you can afford to, to quit trying. Like yeah. I think it, there, you got, or you got to accept the fact that, and this is kind of this is kind of the same in in life in general. There's always one person out of the two in the relationship that cares more. Like yeah. You know, they rarely care the same. You know, for no. each other. And but as a coach, you have to choose to be okay with being the one that cares more Dean and the Smith. one that may get their heart broken. Dean Smith had a great quote, and I and I had it, uh, I have it somewhere. And uh, he was like, "You can either choose to open yourself up and get hurt." it's going to happen or shut yourself off and never be close to anybody. So I'd rather be like Dean Smith, my dad, open yourself up and not now. And this is how loyal he is. So, you know, you know, this is bad. I'm not, I don't get into this stuff at all, but with politics. So, you know, coach actually campaigned for Trump the first time around 2016 went, I mean, traveled with him and say, so of course everybody's on him, you know, Hey, you know, you shouldn't be doing that. You know, everybody, I say, I, you know, I'm not saying I support this or that, but so I asked my dad once, I said, Hey, you know, you got people close to you saying you should do it. He's like, he's like, I don't care. I, I gave him my word. I'd help. Wow. And he gave, and he actually gave him his word like a year before he even decided to run. Cause there was rumors. And my dad somehow got a hold of him and was like, Hey, if you ever to think about running for president, I can really help you in the Midwest. And then like a, a year later, he called him up, and my dad went on a campaign. Of course, people, you know how it is right now with everything. And I asked my dad, and he was like, I don't care. He's like, I gave my guy the word. Even though it was a year ago, and people were – and that's just him. And he didn't care about the backlash. If there was – you know, if he gives you his word, I mean, it's gold, you know. It, it, he was just a uh, loyal guy. And that's, that's one thing I think people miss. And that's – I always said when people would ask me, one thing he taught me, is the greatest thing I think is loyalty. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti Podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.